in the filing cabinet on the bottom right in a locked file, you would find manila folders that help me with students who have eligibility issues. Now let's just be honest, the last thing you want to have in my office is a file. Some of the students in this room have a file. Some of the teachers in this room have a file. Some of you parents have a file. It's not a good place to have a file. But there could be residential issues, like you live on a zone, attend on a zone variant, have a hardship that makes you ineligible, or eligibility questions of all sorts. Some are cleared up in a matter of days, some in a matter of months. However, one took the athletic office over one year to clear. One year, not 180 days, because here's the rule. If you're 180 days in one place, no matter what, you're eligible as long as your grades are good. This took a year, not 180 days, 365 days to clear. This individual created a situation that not only never existed in the Durango Athletic Office, it didn't exist in the Clark County School District. It didn't exist at the NIAA offices. To be honest with you, the Gorman situation looks easy compared to this. He created a situation that was extraordinary. We were trying to do things that had never been done, and to this day I really don't know how we got it done, other than the fact that I think they finally gave up and said, let him play. But this young man, much like Michelle, would come to my office and he would ask me every day, am I eligible? Sometimes twice a day. I remember saying to myself, this kid better be something special. He better be as good on the court as he is off the court for all this work. We're talking a file that's two, three inches thick. Well, he was. He lettered in sports like swimming and tennis. He led the student body as the class president. He blazed the trail that many will want to follow. He earned the highest GPA possible, and he has all those varsity letters to show for it. A true trailblazer, I'm sorry, Chris Engel.
Then I traveled with the team to Bermuda, yes, the island, to play in a basketball tournament. Apparently we couldn't find anywhere in America to play that year. <laughs> it was on that trip that I saw this young man as a junior. He was still growing. Amazingly, I didn't think he had gained a pound, even though he ate like a family of eight. He started to develop a set of support awareness that great athletes often have. You can't coach it, they just have it. They know where they are, what they can do, what they want to do, what you wanted them to do, and where you're at. Besides that, traveling with this young man, I realized what a great kid from a great family that supported him completely, <clears throat> as well as the program. A rarity in this me first sports world. Now in his senior year, no disappointments at all. He led by example, he played hard, established himself as a leader on the court and off in the classroom. He has a four point, and I think I'm gonna be correct, I think you're what, four seven? <laughs> GPA. Wow. He played his way into an athletic scholarship appointment to the Air Force Academy. However, I don't think he will fit into any fighter jet we have yet designed. <laughs> they may have to lash him under the wing. <laughs> But I'm sure if there's a basketball in his hand, he will hit the target and we will be fine. Ladies and gentlemen, the male athlete of the year, Joe Tuss. Thank you. 